Hello, so this is the start of my comedy journey. Yesterday, for the first time ever, I did my first ever comedy class. I think I'm pretty funny, but probably not. So that's what I'm doing in the classes. Uh, unfortunately, I forgot to take any videos. There is one picture though, taken by the, the course teacher, Louise. It's pretty blurry and <laughs> can't really see me very well. I'm actually on my way now to watch a bit of free comedy at a pub. So I'll let you know how that goes and, and what I learned from it. And we'll see if we can get funny as we go. Just a little fueling stop before heading off to the Richmond for the comedy. Look at this bad boy. I've just stopped off for a, a cheeky little pre-show beer here at the North Lane pub. Got some really interesting artifacts inside. And I'm now just crossing the road, straight over there, there I think. Now I'm walking across the road, hopefully I won't get run over. Go to the Richmond pub to see a bit of stand-up comedy. Let's see what I can learn. Last night was fun at the Richmond. Not too many people there, about 12 people, and that included the comedians. It was a night hosted by Joe Baines, and there were three other comedians, one Mike Techman, uh, another guy called Winter, and unfortunately I've forgotten the last guy's name. I, I didn't catch it. The funny thing was, is I sat right near the front, and as soon as I got there, the uh, compare Joe, he said to me, are you one of the comedians? I said, no, I'm just sat here watching. He said, you look like a comedian. So I don't know what that means. Maybe it's the years or who knows, but I didn't perform, but he said I should come again. And so maybe after a few more weeks with the comedy course that I'll go and perform at the Richmond pub and come along if and when I do it. So I had a night out in London last night and uh, I'm back in Brighton this morning and just look at this snow. Unbelievable. We never get this type of snow in Brighton. I've got my comedy course later today. Hopefully it'll be on because this is snow joke. Do you get it? Um, I've been watching lots of YouTube videos, writing some material. I also went to a comedy night at the Southern Bell on Friday. It was a neurodiverse night, so that was good fun. And hopefully I've got my lesson today, but we'll wait and see, because this snow is not stopping, just incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go wild, go crazy. Welcome to the stage, Richard. Good evening everyone, how are you all doing? You all look beautiful tonight, are you having a good week? Yeah. yeah. So it's a few days since my second comedy class and it did go ahead and yet you'll see that the snow is still here in Brighton. It's given me a chance to reflect on my first ever performance of written comedy material. I decided to base it around the fact that KFC had been shut in the UK after a problem with their new deliverers. Uh, I think it went pretty well. Apparently we eat one million pounds worth of chicken a day. Now that's not a poultry number. Hey! Oh. Technically it is a poultry oh. number. Oh. Like it. Like it. Like it. <laughs> As you'll see, I had a few pun jokes in there, which is quite interesting because I always thought I'd be more of a storytelling comedian, and yet when I was writing this material, I was either making kind of Christmas cracker jokes or bad dad jokes, or I was writing material which was completely filthy. And actually, I want to be a pretty clean comedian. I'd rather not swear. I'd rather not talk dirty. But when you're writing material, it becomes so easy to do that. So ha have a look at another one of the, the puns I tried. I thought when I wrote it, it was brilliant. It got a bit of a groan, though. I do admit that I like a bargain bucket drunk. You know, legless. Hey. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 I guess that makes me a breast man. 
Yeah. Chicken as well. <laughs> Overall, the teacher Louise was pretty happy with what I prepared. She could clearly see that I put some effort into it. She was very pleased with the performance I gave. I was very comfortable on the stage, but that's kind of to be expected with my background in broadcasting. She said a couple of the jokes were a bit groany, those groaners. She said they can be good, but maybe not too many of them. She also didn't like one kind of dirty joke in particular, but as I said, I'm not sure I want to go down that track anyway. So it's Tuesday again and I'm on my way back to the windmill for week three of my stand-up comedy class. I'm gonna make sure I don't walk into a lamppost doing this. Uh, been working hard on my set. It's uh, something to do with acid attacks. Might be a, a little bit too dark for people. We'll have to see <laughs> how it gets on. Been a good few days. Was at the uh, big win for Brighton against Arsenal winning 2-1, which was amazing. And just stopped for some food at Brighton's first ever Taco Bell. Not bad, not amazing, but it's fueled me up, ready for some comedy at the windmill. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the noise I keep getting when I'm trying my material out. I think it's clever stuff. Perhaps that's the problem. Overall, the set didn't go quite as well this week as it went last week. There was one bit that the teacher Louise liked and would actually like me to develop a little bit further. I've started to tell people that I've been doing a stand-up comedy course. And the first thing they do is, why do you think you're funny? I say, well, no, that's why I'm doing a stand-up comedy course. <laughs> And I was thinking about this, when someone says, oh, I'm doing a first aid course, you don't go, why? Do you think you're good at saving lives? Do you think you're going to cure cancer? You just don't do it. When someone says, oh, I'm doing a dog walking course, you don't go, why? Do you think you're good on all fours? It's not going to happen. <laughs> This week I found an amazing podcast called The Comedian's Comedian. It gives an insight into the creative process of stand-up comics. I was just listening to an episode with Rachel Paris. You might know her from The Daily Mash. She also performs comedy songs. For some reason, when I came home, because I've got my own podcast called The Best in the World with Richard Parr, I decided to change the lyrics of Elvis's If I Can Dream all to Best in the World. I then decided to film it. My cat makes a little appearance. I don't know why I'm doing it. I look like an absolute moron. And I shouldn't show this to anybody. And I normally wouldn't. But I'm thinking, if I can't look like an idiot in this comedy journey, when can I? So I'm going to finish this YouTube with a little bit of my version of Elvis's If I Can Dream with the lyrics of The Best in the World. The best in the world, 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 the So right now I'm on my way to London for a job interview. It's 8.20 in the morning on a Friday. With my comedy class coming up on Tuesday, I think I'm going to try and use this experience to write material. It of course means I'm travelling at peak time in London, which means it's going to cost a fortune. Hopefully it will be worth it. Now in Victoria, went pretty well. Give you more details when there's not a lot of people around me. Now just getting the train back to Brighton. Got a few funny stories to tell as well, which I think will work well in the comedy. We're going to a comedy event now in Brighton. It's Sunday, I'm in Victoria Park. I'm about to go and watch my Sunday league football team, Hove FC, play. 
Unfortunately, I've got a hamstring injury, so that's why I'm not featuring today. Uh, Friday night was fun. Did a little bit of a pub crawl before the comedy. Went to the Brighton Tavern, where I sat next to Misty the Cat as I had a gin. Then I went to the Earth and Stars and had gluten-free fish and chips. And then the comedy began at the Caxton. <laughs> Boys won two 0 Hopefully, I'll be back next week. Back to Friday at the Caxton. The two people from my course who I was meant to be going with both were sick, and they sent me a text just before the show. So I turned up, Billy No Mates, in a suit. The venue is a little bit strange in the fact that you entered the room by walking across the stage. I, I'm not sure I would have personally liked that myself. But overall, it was a really good night. And I think one of the best things for me was actually getting to speak to the comedians afterwards, learning things about their sets and, and how the whole night was arranged. So that was really good. So it was great to meet people like Ben Carter, Matt Nicholson and Joe Foster. Let's give a warm round of applause for Richard. <laughs> Thank you very much. Great to see all of you. Uh, my name's Rich, or as predictive text on an old Nokia would call me, Shag. <laughs> <laughs> that stopped a few first dates, I tell you. So that was part of this week's homework where we had to develop an opener and I tried to think of different things to describe me, to talk about me, things about the FA Cup and the Joker. But I went with that line about uh, the predictive text on the Nokia. I really like it. I thought it might get a, a bigger laugh, but I will try it again and see where we go. Overall, the uh, the piece went quite well. I think better than last week. The teacher, Louise, um, did have a few comments. One of them being, I was particularly loud. I applied for a job interview this week. I love job interviews. It's the one place... You're expected to brag! I know that's not very British, because we, we don't like talking about how great we are. I guess that's the Polish in me. I love taking British jobs. <laughs> there weren't quite so many this week, but I did have one one-liner in there. Unfortunately, it didn't get a groan, so I was pretty pleased about that. The only thing is, it's still a little bit dirty when I really want to be quite a clean comedian, but I'm finding that bit hard. Did any of you see, see it? You know, the, the story about the, the actor, Ralph Fiennes, and the time massage parlor? Oof, it has a happy ending, though. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> a couple more observations from Louise were as she thought the first half of the set was much better than the second half. And she also felt that some of my performance was a little bit hamdram. <laughs> I've watched it back. I'm not really sure about that. I kind of think it's me. I kind of think it's me talking. It might have been this one bit, which I'm going to end this week's video with. I thought it was quite funny. I think it was probably the, the best bit of the set. Again, not very clean either. So if we were to use the phrase two left hands, what would we use it for? Would we use it for maybe someone who's a bad thrower? Oh, a few people died in that plane crash. <laughs> would we use it for someone who struggles to clap? <laughs> Would we use it for someone who is bad at masturbation? <laughs> I'm not going to do any uh, any moves for that. Don't worry. Just for that. Not going to do that. Oh, one more thing. The job I went for, I got it. Along with doing Louise's course, I've also been reading a book by Sally Holloway called The Serious Guide to Joke Writing. And one of the exercises in the book is called Stream of Consciousness. For 10 minutes, you just talk about one subject, something you hate, effectively a rant. I'm gonna do it now about parking attendance. This is the third time I've tried it because my iPhone's been playing up. I'm gonna set the clock. There's a few prompts if I get stuck, which I might use, and let's see how we get on. Parking attendants, they are a nightmare. The Army and Navy, you've 
got police, maybe then you've got police support officers. I would say that parking attendants, parking wardens are so far down that they're below the grammar police. <laughs> You've got Postman Pat, and you've got Thomas the Tank, and friendly old Postman, and friendly little train. Parking Warden would be the bad guys. They would be the pantomime villains, wouldn't they? He's behind you, or the car's behind you. Do you reckon they go home and do the same to their kids? So when their kids are playing with their cars, playing with their toys, if they don't put them away when they're finished with them, they go, son, this, this car's in the wrong place, you're gonna get a ticket. I always forget my number plate, so I'll go to the machine and then I can't quite see what my number plate is. So I have to leave the machine, go get the number plate, at which point someone has jumped in front of me in the queue, they're on the machine, so I'm sat behind, I'm stood behind them, and then the warden comes over and gives me a ticket for not having <laughs> paid for the parking. And why do they take so long taking photos of every car? You know, this isn't for your personal Instagram. Could you imagine that? If they have their own Instagram going, hey, did that car today. Look at me. Check out my page tomorrow as I get another car. I bet there is one parking warden who has his own Instagram page just full of cars. And in fact, it's probably like a car Instagram page and people like it because like, oh, that's a cool car. But those in the know are like, oh yeah, look at you, got another one. That's another. 50 quid commission in your pocket. Where do you go with this industry? Do you what, start off with a little cul-de-sac and build your way up to residential areas and one day you hit the big time, you hit that high street, you're able to do outside Primark. parking attendants that is me roasting you so that's it that's the time gone it got pretty bad towards the end I'll have a look back and see if there's any good material for this week's stand-up it's Wednesday and I've just been to nerd night hosted by my friend Partha Das a friend of mine from Eagle Labs Brighton it's all a bit like a TED talk really something new something scientific something kind of geeky and I, I really enjoyed it and Partha was the uh, compare and the host and he was really really funny so there's lots I learned from him in London today I'm hosting a thing called the sports media networking event where I'm hopefully going to meet other journalists youtubers bloggers producers writers presenters I'm also here to check out some of the areas in London for my move for the new job I got so uh, just checking this place out look at that I should live in there, that's crazy. It's Tuesday, I'm just opposite the windmill getting ready for my comedy class. Last night's sports networking event went really well. I was pleased to meet new people. Did have a big easy just before. I know this isn't a food blog, but I really enjoyed the California lobster roll. I did have an interesting story coming back last night when I, I met this guy who's from a football firm and wants to take his lads over to North Korea for a weekend. That would make a hell of a documentary. But I'm off to do my uh, comedy now, my little set. It's all about traffic wardens and also about toilet attendants. We'll see if it gets any laughs. You might have like the army here, then the navy, then the police, maybe a police support officer. Traffic wardens are down here, just below the grammar police. <laughs> I before E except for C, we tell our kids not to take sweets from people we don't know. Yet in the toilet, there's a man handing out lollipops. <laughs> Why do I need a chupa chup? I'm 35 years old. 